Hello, everybody. I hope everyone's doing okay. Yeah, let's let's get started with um, what we're covering today because we we have a lot going on today. Um, so let me go to the next uh, slide here real quick. Now, how many of you have a, a Pisces, Gemini, or Virgo sun sign or rising sign? So uh, ascendant. Is the rising sign, sun sign, obviously you know your own sun signs. Anybody with a Pisces, Gemini, Virgo? Okay, so it looks like nobody has a Pisces, Gemini, or Virgo sun or rising sign. Interesting, okay. So how many of you have planets or points in the mid to late degree of Scorpio or Pisces? Because that's what we're going to be looking at today. Some of these mid to late degrees, Scorpio or Pisces. Anybody? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, maybe not everybody's here yet. Or people are kind of asleep still. Because, um, you know, there is the Neptune station going on and Mercury is retrograde. So most of us are probably have a sleep deficit at this point. <laughs> Okay, Erin says she's got Ascendant Scorpion 28. All right, woohoo, Erin. Okay, so that uh, Mercury station is right on your Ascendant. Very good. All right, we'll talk more about that. All right, so first of all, I want to say thank you for your time, for being here, for spending the next 90 plus minutes with me, if you can. If you have to jump off sooner, feel free to watch this as a recording, of course, as always. Um, and I just want to say a little bit about myself for those of you who are brand new to the forum. I'm originally from Austria, from Vienna, from Europe, and I uh, have lived in the United States since 1994. And I am, uh, I've been an astrologer for as long as I can remember in terms of like studying it and being investigated in the planets and what's going on with my chart and other people's charts. But I've had the business as I have it right now since 2010. So the last eight years have been me immersing myself into astrology completely and also uh, becoming a, uh, a coach, a life coach as well in 2009. And so I've kind of combined the two things together. And so I'm happy to say that I love what I do and that it's, that it's going really well. And uh, yeah, so if there are any questions about my, me or what I do or how I do it or blah, blah, you know, feel free to email me. I'm, I'm, I'm an open book. I, I, I'm happy to answer any questions about myself if that's, um, if that's something that, that interests you. All right. Now, um, the agenda for this webinar is going to be that we will talk about uh, Neptune, Mercury, and Chiron. So those three planets are going direct. They're, they're stationing right now, or they will be stationing very soon. Um, and they, they're all of three of them have been retrograde and they will be going direct um, within the next couple of weeks. Neptune is already direct since November 24th, uh, went direct at 13 and a half degrees of Pisces. Uh, Mercury will, will start to go direct on December 6th. It's currently retrograde. Um, in Sagittarius, but it will go direct at 27, 27 and a half degrees of Scorpio. Uh, and Chiron stations direct on December 9th at almost 28 degrees of Pisces. So we'll, we'll definitely cover all of that, talk a little bit about what all of that means and how we can kind of look that up in our own charts to see um, how we can understand it a little bit better for how this affects all of us personally a little bit more rather than just knowing what the transit is, which of course you, you can listen to in my videos and you can, um, you can read on my weekly forecast as well, the general gist of it, but how does it impact each one of us personally? That's really what the forums are for, right? So we'll, we'll take a look at that. And so one of the things that we're going to look at is where are you going to move forward in regards to spiritual ideals healing journey and new perspectives. And so the reason for that is because we are, whenever a planet has been retrograde for a while and it goes direct, when that direct motion happens, we're feeling so we're like a forward movement, like something, the internal process that we've been in during the retrograde phase starts to move more into uh, an external place and we can start to move something forward in our lives. Um, 
Now, what houses in your chart are going to mo 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 be most activated by these station direct phases, that is something we're definitely going to be covering today. And we're going to look at that in more detail, like we do with every forum, right? We will answer questions in more detail towards the end of the webinar, but in between, I'll take questions if, if they're important, if they help you to, to understand what's going on during the webinar. Now, Deb is saying uh, she loves the monthly forecasting forum and uh, best way to learn, even if it doesn't apply to my chart. Thanks, Johnny, for being you and doing what you do. Oh, thanks, Deb. <laughs> okay, that's sweet. All right, and Vicky says, my Chiron is in Pisces at 11 degrees in the fifth house. Okay, Vicky, very good. So we'll actually, we'll come to that when we talk about Chiron going direct. So keep that thought. Um, and I will, I will talk a little bit more about that in a moment. All right, so let's move to the next uh, page here. So uh, this is the page that I usually always show, you know, during the monthly forecasting forums because this is very helpful for you to take a look at and, and have printed out during the webinars because it gives you a little bit of an overview of what's going on this month and what's coming up, you know, in December and what we're going to be talking about. So you can see here very clearly, you know, with Mercury is going to re-enter Scorpio on December 1st, so it's still in Sagittarius right now. And then uh, Venus will do the same. Uh, the Mercury station starts on December 2nd and will go until the 10th. Uh, then the Neptune station ends on December 4th, so it's, already, it's still stationing as we speak, and uh, it, will, it will be stationing until the December 4th. And then uh, the Chiron station uh, begins on December 1st until the 18th. So whenever these station phases happen, it just means that this planet or this energy is more exalted during this time. And so we're feeling the energy of Neptune very strongly right now until the 4th. And then once December 1st and 2nd rolls around, we're going to start to feel Chiron and Mercury more strongly. So uh, what's, what's Neptune, Mercury, and Chiron all about, right? So uh, Neptune is all about universal love. It's about the things we dream about. It's, 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 our, it's our connection to, to God, to universe, to source, to our intuitive self. It's our interconnectedness with everything that exists, basically, right? Neptune represents this, uh, this knowing of um, energetic interconnectedness, right? That's, I think, a great way to put it. Um, and so when Neptune is a stationing, we're feeling this, this strong sense of interconnectedness more strongly and the sense of, you know, like the heart energy being maybe more open at that time because Neptune is connected to the heart. Um, and so it's connected to compassion. It's connected to understanding. Um, but the, there's also, of course, you know, uh, denser vibrations of Neptune. These are all the higher vibrations of Neptune. The more denser vibrations of Neptune have more to do with maybe feeling a little bit out of it, maybe feeling a bit tired, maybe feeling a little bit like slower, like Neptune slows us down because it's an invitation to get connected to our intuitive selves, to our inner divinity. So we're, we're needing to slow down. And because we're needing to slow down, and that's not something that our conditioned mind likes to do necessarily, um, we tend to sometimes, you know, feel a little bit foggy or tired during a Neptune station, right? And so some of you might have already experienced that, of course, since Neptune has been uh, stationing already since, uh, let's see, when did it start? Um, it started November 14th. So it's, it's been stationing for quite a while already, right? So for like 10 days or something, 14 days for two weeks. So we've, we've definitely all been feeling a little bit of this like, okay, hmm, got to go with the flow, got to feel into it, right? That type of thing. Now, of course, when Mercury starts its station, the mind energy gets more activated because Mercury has to do with information, with mental energy. So we're going to feel that a little bit more strongly. And because it stations in Scorpio, we're going to feel maybe a little bit more of that dense, that sort of like, uh, you know, that heavy Scorpio, like, emotional authenticity and needing to connect and so our mental capacity is going to want to go deeper dig deeper go to the cause of things or go to the understanding of something deeper 
Um, there could also be mistrust, of course, with Scorpio, and there could also be, you know, feeling maybe um, a little bit more like like things are a little bit heavy and intense, you know, like there's an intensity with Scorpio. So some of those things could start to happen with that Mercury station that, that starts on December uh, 2nd, right? Now Chiron, when Chiron starts the station, that station will be a little bit more about bringing that sense of um, that healing energy. You know, Chiron has to do with the wounded healer, but it also is connected to our insecurities or the places where we feel a little bit um, like we've, we've had to do things on our own. We didn't have help from other people or we're different from other people because we, we don't quite do things the way other people do them. So with the Chiron station, we're feeling the, a little bit more strongly this, this wounding inside of us or also the, the need to heal or do some healing work at that time. So both of that will be strongly from December 1st until the 18th. Now, as I mentioned already, the direct phases, kind of like um, that sort of like that planet's energy starts to go from our internal process, which is the retrograde phase, to a moving into the world and moving into what are we going to do with those energies, right? So um, with Neptune, we've already started to, you know, connect the, the intuitive process and the, the process around uh, divinity and, and connecting to our dreams you know, wanting to move that forward, um, that's already started on Saturday on, on the 24th. Um, and then with, uh, with Chiron, it's, it's going to be connected to our own healing journey. You know, how can we bring this, this, this healing into the world? You know, whether it's something that we've learned about ourselves during the retrograde phase that we're now ready to, to give to other people or something that we've we've gotten in touch with internally in terms of our own wounding that we're now ready to to do some healing ourselves about you know with with somebody else you know some kind of healing modality um, and then with mercury direct of course there's always this sense of like you know something the stuff that that's that's that we've discussed or things that have come up mentally speaking or information wise speaking during the Mercury retrograde, we're getting a chance during the direct phase to uh, go over some of that information to kind of maybe process it one more time, maybe recommunicate or reconnect with something that has occurred during the Mercury retrograde phase. So yeah, so all of this is sort of like the, the direct Motion with Mercury Direct just means we're, we're, we're ready to, to, uh, to take whatever com conversations or communications or information that we've, we've uh, kind of mulled over during the retrograde phase or even before the retrograde phase when Mercury was in its shadow phase. We're, get, we're, we're getting a chance to kind of like now take that process more to an external place. So it's no longer internal uh, processing. Now it becomes an external processing. Okay, so let's go to the next um, to the next place here. All right, so so basically, um, this chart is for December sixth when Mercury goes direct, and the reason why I chose the Mercury direct chart is because you can, we can see in this chart also, you know, what Chiron is doing as it's getting ready to go direct, and we can also see what uh, what Neptune is doing. Uh, because it's still in the same, almost in the same degree as when it went direct. So I figured I would, I would pull this chart so we can see a little bit what's going on here. And we can see here very clearly that, you know, Mercury is in Scorpio um, and is sort of like, you know, trying to catch up again with Jupiter and with, uh, you know, with the sun in Sagittarius. You know, it's, it's, it's sort of like it just went back into Scorpio just for a little bit and then it's going to, you know, move full full force back into Sagittarius. So with with Mercury in, in Scorpio, of course, there's something that we haven't quite finished up, you know, um, that we have to kind of finish before we can before we can make that step forward into Sagittarius. So, you know, think about, you know, um, what has what has occurred, you know, uh, when Mercury was in Scorpio in October, right? So most of October, from October 11th on until the very end of October. Um, 
So what has occurred in October for you? You know, like, was there anything that you still feel like you need to go back to that and really take a good look at, you know, what's going on with my process in regards to past trauma, uh, what's going on with my process in regards to fears that I have um, about something that has occurred in the past possibly or something that I'm trying to prevent uh, happening in the future? Where am I guarding certain things? You know, where's my thinking um, sort of like trying to protect me from things or where's my thinking getting obsessive in some way? Where does some, was there some obsessive thinking going on uh, in October in my life? And, and what was I thinking about, you know? So we're getting a chance now with, with Mercury being in that, in that, uh, you know, in that very end of Scorpio to, to kind of take a look at that one more time, especially since it's stationing there, right? But then when Mercury moves into Sagittarius, we're really starting to, you know, feel sort of like that, this opening again, that we've been feeling, that, that we're currently also feeling, because Mercury still is in Sagittarius, right? Where there's this opening around like, oh, you know, adventure, let me, let me expand, let me explore, let me move beyond or further or let me understand certain things that I maybe haven't understood before. So it's sort of like a mental uh, opening um, opening happening or possible, uh, not that it's necessarily happening for everybody, but, but there is a possibility for mental uh, expansion, right, at this time when Mercury goes into back into Sagittarius. Um, so, um, so let's take a look at our own chart. So make sure you have your own birth chart in front of you so that we can do that. And I'm going to pull up my chart here um, so that we can um, take a quick look at this and see, um, and see where, all these, where all these station phases are taking place, where all these station direct phases are taking place, right? So, um, so let's start with Neptune. And then Aaron is saying, thank you, Sonia. So appreciate the insights I'm able to have during your forecasting forums. I was feeling overwhelmed during the recent full moon and it makes so much more sense now. I appreciate you and all you do. Thanks, Aaron. And if you, if you are feeling overwhelmed, just remember that the Neptune station will end December 4th and then things will start to be a little bit less overwhelming at that point. Um, and also, of course, with the full moon energy, the way it was set up with Mars in, in Pisces squaring the full moon, that also brings a certain amount of, of feeling a little bit overwhelmed sometimes because we, we want to do a lot, but then we also need to rest and go within. So, and sometimes we're not paying attention to those signals and those messages. So then we get overwhelmed. So just remember, if you feel overwhelmed, slow down, take a breath. <sighs> and just let it be okay all right tanya saying thank you sonia yes i benefit from the money question as well thank you so much uh, much appreciation thank you all right guys so just remember next forecasting forum will be on december 20th at 2 p.m eastern time 7 p.m uh, london time and if you have a membership already then you just need to watch out for the emails that are coming out uh, on that day and if you don't have a membership yet, then feel free to sign up either for star memberships. So you can get the forecasting forums for $27 a month or, or if you just want to join once, $37 for, for one time joining. All right. So have a fantastic, fantastic rest of your week. I'm glad you uh, guys were able to join and thanks for all the wonderful questions. And, um, much love and a big cyber hug to all of you. And I will see you again soon. All right. Bye-bye.